I believe I found my purpose in life when I was uh, quite younger than I am now. I'm a grandfather, I have uh, all, uh, almost adult grandchildren, and I have some new ones on the way, but I found my purpose uh, many years ago as an educator. As I say, I taught almost 7,000 students in my career. Um, as a cultural, a cultural therapist, I suppose the only way to describe it, I, I, I participate in ceremonies, ceremonial of my communities. I'm, I'm considered a leader, a teacher, and I've been given responsibilities and rights within our ceremonial traditions. And so, um, yeah, I found my place in, in, in the world, what I'm supposed to do in life, and I continue to do that. Uh, every day that I live, and probably I'll never retire. I'll probably just keep on being, uh, doing what I'm doing. I'll slow down a little bit, but I don't, I, I don't see uh, a retirement playing golf and going down to Florida, laying on the beach. That kind of retirement just probably won't, what isn't in my books. There's so much, so many things we have to relearn, so many things we have to do. So, and there's so much, there's such a need every day. Uh, I get calls continually to uh, teach here, to teach there. Last week I was at the uh, Assembly of First Nation Elders gathering and uh, they asked me to do the pipe ceremonies for these elders from across Canada. And so then what happened is I ended up teaching the elders at the Assembly of First Nations. So I'm teaching kids one day and then the next day I'm in teaching elders from across the country. And they actually gave me this from Saskatchewan. So I wore that today. They, they uh, stood me up and they said, we want this guy back because he can teach. Way back many years ago, I, 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 uh, I went back and, uh, into the community when I was a young person and looked for elders because that's where our knowledge was supposed to be. I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find nothing that was beyond uh, two or three hundred, two hundred years or Indian Act elders or Indian Act community and Indian consciousness. And so um, I had to search for that. So I, I traveled, I went way out west to, um, to Wyoming, to a Arapaho uh, community in, in, uh, in uh, what was a place called Wind River. There's a movie by that name nowadays. So I went to Wind River and uh, participated in ceremonies out there, fasted. And I didn't realize this until much later that Arapaho or Anishinaabek, they speak the same language as we do, as a Chippewa or Ojibwe language but much older language. And the ceremonial structures were very much similar to Ojibwe or contemporary Ojibwe. And so that, uh, that was a big motivation for me uh, growing up in the, in the civil unrest period and growing up in that period, I got to see a lot of people. So my heroes like uh, Eddie Benton Benet, uh, Clyde Belcourt, uh, Dennis Banks, these were all heroes of mine because they were the American Indian Movement leaders and I was in the American Indian Movement since I was so high. And uh, it's never, uh, they've been my motivators to this day. Like you can go to Minneapolis and you can see Clyde Belcourt still walking the streets and you can still see Eddie Benton doing his ceremonial work, which they've always done all their life. And so for me, those are my real heroes. Just a, and there's a, just a few, there's many others, like Bee Medicine, and other women, and other men who've continued to, continue to build and, and uh, pass on the knowledge of our, of our, of our culture.